So after the Dobbs decision where the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and the right to an abortion, the next logical question was, would a fetus be given legal protections of personhood under the U.S. Constitution? And the Supreme Court has just given us a little glimpse of whether that's going to happen or not. Check this out. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to decide whether fetuses are entitled to constitutional rights in light of its June ruling overturning the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision that had legalized abortion nationwide, steering clear of now another front to America's culture wars. So let's talk about this case. Lawyers for the group Catholics for Life and two Rhode Island women, one named Nicole Riley and the other using the pseudonym Jane Doe, argued that this case, their case, presents an opportunity for the court to meet the inevitable question head on. And that's our fetuses do they have both equal protection rights and due process rights under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution? Now, the Rhode Island Supreme Court relied on the now reversed Roe precedent in finding that the 14th Amendment did not extend rights to fetuses. Now, the Roe ruling was recognized as the right to personal privacy under the U.S. Constitution and protected a woman's ability to terminate her pregnancy. Now, this is where things kind of get complicated. See, Rhode Island had a criminal statute already on the books predating Roe that had prohibited abortions. Now, after the Rose ruling back in 1973, a federal court had declared that the Rhode Island law was unconstitutional because it violated Roe. And that law was not in effect because Roe decided that it was unconstitutional. So then in 2019, the Democratic-led legislature passed the 2019 Reproductive Privacy Act. So when the governor of Rhode Island signed this in 2019, it essentially codified the then status quo under the Roe v. Wade decision. So when Roe was overturned in the Dobbs decision, it kind of threw this kerfuffle within this Rhode Island law, because let's not forget, you still had a criminal statute that was unconstitutional before, but you can now make an argument it is constitutional now because of the, the changing Roe decision. And they now have laws on the books that rely on Roe as precedent, but now since Roe is overturned, are those laws now unconstitutional? So that's essentially what this case was about. So this, both this Catholic group and these two women were challenging this 2019 law that codified the right to abortion in line with the Roe precedent because Roe was overturned. The two women, pregnant at the time when the case was filed, sued on behalf of their fetuses that later gave birth. The Rhode Island Supreme Court declared that their fetuses lacked proper legal standing to actually bring the suit. So that's when they appealed to the Supreme Court saying that their fetuses should have that legal standing. Now, the Supreme Court, which judges what cases they're going to take and which cases they're not going to take, declined to hear this case, leaving the lower court's ruling intact and the law of Rhode Island. The current Rhode Island governor, Daniel McKee, a Democrat, Welcome Tuesday's action by the justices. He said, we're satisfied that the Supreme Court declined to hear this frivolous appeal. Governor McKee believes that we should be expanding access to reproductive health care for women. And the governor's spokesman added that the governor is committed to using his veto pen to block any legislation that would take our state backwards. Now, this denial of certiorari to this case was in line with the Dobbs decision. Conservative Justice Samuel Alito wrote in the June ruling overturning the abortion right precedent that in the decision, the court took no position on if and when prenatal life is entitled to any of the rights enjoyed after birth. Now, even though the Supreme Court is staying silent on the issue on whether fetuses have legal protections, some states have granted some protections to fetuses, like one enacted in Georgia affecting fetuses starting at around six weeks of pregnancy that would grant fetuses before birth a variety of legal rights and protections like those of any other person. And under such laws, terminating a pregnancy could be legally considered murder under state law and not under federal law. Okay, so at the end of the day, the question is, should fetuses have the same legal protections as people who are alive and walking around, right? That's essentially what the argument is. Now, before, I know a lot of people are going to say, no, fetuses shouldn't have any legal protections. But even under the Roe framework, when Roe was the law of the land, fetuses did obtain some legal protections after viability. So, you know, for instance, late, late term abortions were banned, I think, federally. And there were some other provisions that said, you know, you couldn't have an abortion one week before, you know, before your due date. Right. If you're nine months pregnant, you're like, I don't I want to have an abortion now. You couldn't do that in most states, you know, those late term abortions. So even under Roe, there were some legal protections, not as robust. You know, they weren't saying that's a person, but they were saying that that fetus does have some protections if it's viable on its own. But now. 
the kicker is going to be, well, do those legal protections kick in during six weeks when the fetus is obviously not viable? Or does it kick in at conception? Or are we still using viability as the point where the fetus doesn't get all legal protections, but it does get some protections because the state has an interest in protecting that soon to be life. Let me know how you feel in the comment section. Should fetuses have the same legal protections as everyone else? Should they not? Where is the line? Should it be 15 weeks? Should it be 24 weeks? Should it be viability? Is six weeks good enough? Let me know in the comment section what you think. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'm out of here. Peace.